in the middle. Oh, see you later. <gasps> That's like a shape shifter. Calm down, Sophie. It's just a bit of makeup. What? How does that work? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Also, I just wanna say, please excuse my hair today. Let's just not talk about it. So today I've got a big bag of new makeup, which I've never tried, okay. There's one product in here that I have tried before. The rest of these products I have never tried and it's gonna be a full face of testing vegan and cruelty-free makeup because I was starting to put all this stuff together and I was like, a couple of these bits are vegan and cruelty-free and then as I picked more things out of my new in makeup stuff and stuff that you guys had asked me to test, a lot of it was already vegan and cruelty free. So I thought, you know what? I will just do one of these videos because I know that some of you guys find these quite helpful. I'm so excited for the KVD Vegan Beauty. They've got a fully recyclable palette, eyeshadow palette, and that is in here as well. And it looks beautiful and I put it on my stories and you guys all asked me to test it. Okay, not all of you. A lot of you asked me to test it. So that's in here as well. Also today, I'm not wearing any fake tan. So I will be testing foundations and concealers and everything that are my regular skin tone, just because quite frankly, could not be bothered today. There's also quite a few brands in here that I haven't really tried before and haven't heard that much about. So I'm actually starting off with a brand called Moolak and this is their MILF collection. It says underneath MILF, makeup instinct lives forever. And this is an Italian brand. I'm not sure whether they deliberately called it MILF knowing what MILF means. <laughs> I'm sure that they must have done. Somebody must have approved this, right? Anyway, this is the MILF Magic Potion and it's a radiant moisturizing serum. They do have some other products in this range. They've got an eyeshadow palette as well, which I'm not gonna test today just because I'm gonna test the KVD one because I was a bit more excited about that one given it's fully recyclable, but they also have some lipsticks, which I might test at the end, but I've got quite a few different lip products, so we'll see. That's actually a really nice bottle. It looks very classy. I think this is around the 20 pound mark because I was just doing some research. Ooh, it smells very floral. Kind of smells like a, a little bit old lady-ish. Smells quite nice actually. I know that putting the dropper directly onto your skin, a lot of people don't like that. But I mean, I do it with my concealer and my foundation and everything, so. Oh, it's very lightweight. It feels very, very light. It doesn't feel like an oil that just feels like, kind of like a hyaluronic acid serum. You know what, I take it back. I take back what I said about the old lady smell. I actually really like the smell of it but maybe I'm turning into an old lady, who knows. That feels really, really nice. It's left my skin a tiny little bit tacky, but it does feel like it. most of it has sunk into my skin and then just on the surface, it's a little bit tacky, but it doesn't feel oily. It doesn't feel slimy. It doesn't feel slippery. It feels really nice. And I do think it's added that bit of radiance to my skin. I like that, I like it. Good job, MILF, Moolak. Next up, I've got an actual primer. So this is the Sculpted by Amy Connolly. I haven't actually heard of this brand before. This is called the Beauty Base and it's an all-in-one moisturizing primer. So it says pre prep, 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 protect, perfect. It's got SPF 30 in it, UV, UVA and UVB, hyaluronic acid, and it says it's got a golden glow. And this didn't say directly, oh no, it does. It does say on the back, vegan and cruelty-free. I was gonna say, I had to Google it. I did do some searching online and was able to find somewhere that was vegan and cruelty-free, but it does actually say it on the box, so. Wow, it's a very big tube. How much is it? 50 mil, that's quite a lot. That is a lot. Ah, it's got a pump. I don't know if this is about to turn me into the Tin Man, but we will soon find out. It doesn't smell of much, just kind of smells fresh. Oh yes, it definitely has a lot of shimmer in it. Oh my God. Do you see this? So if you are the type of person that just likes to wear a SPF and that's it, I wouldn't go for this unless you want people to see that you've got... It kind of looks like I've put highlighter all over my face. Is that coming across on camera? It's got a very obvious gold shimmer all the way through it and it's really... You know, it's not just like a little glow. It's quite a golden glow. It feels quite nice. I will give it that. This isn't my personal preference when it comes to primers. I don't tend to go for something that's got a lot of shimmer in it. But maybe some people would quite like this. I know that some people like to have a lot of glow underneath their makeup. So maybe if you do like something like this, that, this, what? If you do like something like that, maybe this would be for you, but this is not personally for me. So for my foundation, I'm actually using one that I have tried a long time ago, but this is a different shade. However, when I haven't been wearing tan the past couple of days, I have just been putting this on just because this matches me a bit more when I'm my regular skin tone. This is the shade Warm Light 07. 
the one that I tried before, I think it was like 02 or something, so it was even paler. Mm, I think this one might be a little bit dark for me now, but we'll give it a try. But this is definitely too light when I do have fake tan on, so I thought I'd wear it today. And it's the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Performance Wear Liquid Foundation. This video took me a long time to prepare because I wanted to check that every product that I was using was actually vegan and cruelty free. On their website, it says cruelty free is one of the first things. And this was under the vegan section of their site. So I'm just gonna go off of that. It's quite a fresh foundation. It doesn't have masses of coverage, but I actually quite like that because a lot of the time I would just have my foundation to even out my skin tone and then I'll conceal what I need to conceal with concealer. This shade is definitely quite yellow undertoned. Does that make sense? Yellow undertoned. It is quite a nice foundation. It's not one of my absolute favorites on Ride or Dies, but I do think that it looks very natural. So if you want something that actually looks, I don't know, a bit more skin-like, this one is really nice and it does last a decent amount of time, but it's just not my absolute favorite foundation of all time, but it is still pretty good. I know that some people absolutely love this foundation, so I guess it just depends on your preference. Right, for concealer, I've got these from Nude Sticks. They do some really nice bronzers, really nice cream blushes, but this isn't actually a stick. This is their new concealer, which is called Cream Concealer and Nude Sticks is also cruelty free, it says on their website. I mean, I guess I don't need to say that about everything in this video. I did do some research before, but if I am wrong about anything, please let me know in the comments because I could be, but I just was going off what the internet said. This is a pretty pricey brand. So let's see what these concealers are like. I've got Nude 2, Nude 1 and Nude 4.5. Oh wow, Nude 2 looks very pink. I do like Nude Sticks products. However, I have got to say, I think that having a tin for every single product that they have is a little bit excessive. Let's try Nude 2 first. First, and if this is too dark, I'll add a bit of nude one. But yeah, can you see there? It's quite peachy. Applicator is very flexible, which is nice. Let's see how much coverage this gives. Because usually nude sticks products are quite sort of light coverage and natural. Hmm, yeah, that's pretty light coverage. So maybe this is the type of concealer for the days where I don't really want to be wearing super detectable makeup because it is a bit more on the lighter side of the coverage levels. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I just want a bit more coverage on my blemishes. Yeah, this is definitely not the type of concealer to go for if you are a full coverage kind of person. Off my first impressions, not my favorite. So I don't have a new face powder, so I'm just gonna use the KVD Vegan Beauty one, which is one of my favorite powders. I've got this, which is a palette by Pixi. So this is the Nuance Quartet in Honey Nectar by Pixi. I think they do this in a few different shades. I've got the Lottie London Diamond Bounce Trio, which is three highlighters. I've got the Ofra New Solstice Mini Mix Palette, which has got a big Rodeo Drive in the middle. Oh, see you later. It's got two blushes and the rest are eyeshadows. How gorgeous does this palette look? This is such a beautiful highlighter, but for when I'm like not pale. <laughs> I do have a discount code with Ofra by the way. I think it's just Soph. It is an affiliate code so if you're not cool with using affiliate codes feel free to not use it but I think it saves you 20% off their website. Let me just start off with the pixie one. This one right here and I'm going to dip into the bronzer. It's not massively pigmented because I dipped my brush in there a lot and then tapped off the excess but not one of those ones that you have to be kind of really scared of which is quite good. Much prefer a buildable bronzer so that it doesn't get like super intense super quickly. How many times did I just say super? <laughs> oh okay that was a bit much. Get it all up in that hairline. It's definitely got a bit of glow to it in that bronzer and I think I'm gonna bring this a little bit down my neck under the double chin. I think this bronze is actually really nice. It has a subtle glow to it, it's not too in your face, and it is buildable, which I like. These blushes, okay, this blush definitely looks very pink. This one is more of a highlighter, but it's more of a pink gold highlighter, which isn't my favorite. It's more of like a blush topper, I guess. These aren't my kind of blush shades, but they do feel really nice. I think I'm gonna dip into this Ofra palette and just take this blush down here, which is called Rose. <gasps> Ooh, Rose is one of my favorite blushes from Ofra, so I'm gonna take that. I believe Ofra as a brand is entirely cruelty free and vegan, and you can buy this blush separately. Oh my gosh, I haven't worn that in ages, it's beautiful. I'm also just taking that bronzer to do a bit of sculpting of my nose. For highlighter, I'm gonna use the Lottie London Diamond Bounce Trio. This is kind of like a dupe for the Fenty Beauty, I can't remember what they're called, but you know the super smooth, super glittery Fenty highlighters? And these are kind of like just straight up glitter, but it's like a veil of glitter. I don't know how this is gonna look on my face, so I'm gonna take the lightest one, which is pretty much just white. It really is just straight up glitter. 
from far away it almost gives a wet look to the face but then when you get close up it just really looks like you've got glitter all over your face it's not like any other highlighter that i've tried before i do quite like it do i like it it's quite a cool effect and it still looks quite nice i don't know i don't really know what i think of that let's see what happens if i put it on my brow bone and down my nose and stuff it definitely seems like more of a buildable highlight. You really have to kind of pack it on for it to stick. Oh wow, I really need to pluck that eyebrow. It's interesting, but it's definitely not something that I would reach for on a daily basis. For my eyebrows, I have a whole mix of products from Refai, which is actually a brand by a lovely Instagrammer called Jess. She's actually a model, she's absolutely stunning, and she has got the most incredible eyebrows. And she has launched her own brand, and the whole brand is vegan and cruelty free. Obviously, it says on the packaging, recyclable packaging. And her first drop was some eyebrow products. There's a brand brow sculpting gel and then there's also some pomades and pencils so I think I'll just kind of test all of them. Her Instagram is jesshunt2. If you go on her Instagram you will see she is stunning and she's also super super nice so thank you Jess for sending these products over. I don't know what shade to go for. I think I'll go for medium. Oh I like the packaging it's matte nude and this is the pomade so it does come with a brush on one side and then the other side is a little tiny pot of pomade but it goes all the way down. So I'll use the brush that it comes with this is a little bit thicker than the brow brushes that i would usually go for but let's try it i do like how travel friendly that is though how you've got the little brush and you dip it into the little pot oh it's quite a wet pomade i haven't used a brow pomade in forever this is quite dark for a medium shade yeah, maybe that is a bit too dark for me. I might switch to the light shade for the front of my eyebrow. Very easily movable. It's just kind of blending into my eyebrow without looking too drawn on and getting stuck to certain patches. The medium shade is quite dark, which I wasn't expecting. Did I definitely pick medium up? I'm just going to try the light shade through the front of my brows before I go in with the pencil. Oh, but the light one looks quite light. This one definitely looks like more of a taupey kind of colour. Very, very... Like if I just put a bit on my hand. Can you see it here? Blends out very very easily. It's quite a soft product and it's very matte. I'm just kind of smudging it through the front of my eyebrow rather than drawing in because this brush is a little bit too thick to draw the individual hair strokes. The actual product itself is nice though. It's nice. I mean, I don't tend to go for brow pomades that often anymore just because I find it a lot easier to use a pencil. But the formula of the pomade is very soft, very matte, very blendable, and it seemed to go on pretty nicely. So I put a bit of pencil on and I think for the pencil, I'm going to go for medium. So it's got a spoolie on one side and then the other side is just... Oh, wow. That is a skinny pencil and it's got a point on the very end obviously it won't stay like that forever because it's going to get blunted but oh my god that is a thin eyebrow pencil can you see how thin this draws and it feels quite hard well let's let's try The only thing is, I think the shade might be a bit too warm for me. Is it too warm? I wish my eyebrows were like Jess's. But wow, this is a really nice brow pencil. It's super skinny, so you can really draw in those brow hair strokes. I really like that. I'm just going to see what the light colour is like, see if it's a bit more taupe. The light one might have actually been better, you know. Although, again, it does look quite warm. I really like how that drew on. I'll show you my eyebrows close up in a sec. The final product that I'm going to use is the Brow Sculpt Gel, I think. Oh, oh. It looks white in the thing it kind of looks like the same sort of shade as i don't know pva glue or something it's quite a big big eyebrow brush the formula feels almost like a brow wax oh my gosh this is making my eyebrows so fluffy i'm gonna go for fluffy brows today it really feels like it's gluing my eyebrows into place kind of like soap brows so when you first put it on, you can see the white gel stuff in your eyebrows. However, it's completely dried on this side and it's disappeared. They are literally not moving. <laughs> wow. They are some really nice eyebrow products. Let me just give you a close up. Do you see what I mean? It's made my eyebrows so fluffy. The only thing is I wish that this was a tiny bit more cool toned because I think it is a bit warm. I have got the new KVD Vegan Beauty Recyclable Eyeshadow Palette, which the box and packaging looks really pretty. And it doesn't have any magnets and it doesn't have any mirrors, which sad times because I do like having a mirror on my palette however the reason that it doesn't have a mirror is so that it's a lot easier to recycle and because it doesn't have any magnets it closes like this it's just like cardboard and the eyeshadow palettes don't have pans they literally are just in this thing I don't even know what it is is it like card as well it really does look like a beautiful palette though do you see what I mean 
they're all flat in the pan. Ah, oh, this should work. We'll just hold it like that. Oh my God, I've also got these products from KVD, which are absolutely stunning looking. They're called Dazzle Stick, and it's a long wearing eyeshadow in a stick, but they are so metallic and beautiful looking. I swatched some of these on my Insta stories and honestly I was in shock at how stunning they are. There are some more pinky shades, there's a silver, there's gold, there's copper. I think we're gonna go for this one which is more of a champagne. <gasps> oh my god, it's like a cream eyeshadow. Oh my god, but they are the most... <gasps> They're so creamy and they are so sparkly. I'm using the really strange eyeshadow primer from KVD, which is like a black liquid. Put on eyelid. Oh, I got it on my face. How have I managed that? I don't even know what this is. Like, what is this weird substance that I'm putting on my eyes? I'm gonna take the blue. You know what? I'm gonna take the blue. Let's take the blue. The matte blue. This one, which is a bit of a risk because matte dark blues are sometimes a bit tricky to work with, but we'll see about that. Okay. That was actually quite a lot more than I intended to just put on my eye. Dip in a bit more. And let's just put this all over my lid. It looks like a more fun blue in the palette and then on my eyes it just looks a bit, I don't know, it doesn't look that blue. It looks kind of a grey black with a little bit of blue in there. It's not as bright as I thought it was going to be. Alright, well that's gone on pretty well. It's not gone patchy or anything so far. Let's take this one which is the warm medium light brown. I'm so good at describing things as you probably noticed. And I'm trying to use this to blend out the edges but it's kind of just turning into a sludgy... Actually no, no. Have faith, trust the process, trust the process. I'm just gonna dip into a bit more of that blue because I don't know, it's just not really doing it for me. It just looks a bit dull at the moment. Don't you just think that in the pan it looks so much more exciting? I'm just taking a smaller fluffy brush and I'm gonna pick up some more of that warm brown shade. See, this probably wouldn't have happened if I'd have just stuck to a neutral look, but no. I wanted to try and do something a bit different. Just dipping into my Benefit powder. I'm gonna try and clean that up a bit. Oh, okay, that worked. I'm gonna try and take one of these shimmers. I'm gonna take this blue black shimmer and I'm gonna put this all over my eyelid. So hopefully try and save this a little bit. Okay, wow. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, wow, that is a beautiful shimmer. <gasps> oh my God. Can you see this? It kind of looks like wet. Let me try it with my finger and see if it will be even more intense, because I'm sure it probably will be. Huh. I'd actually say that this one is more of a black shimmer with bits of blue glitter in it, but I think it kind of worked better with a brush. Oh my god. These duochrome shades are just beautiful. Like this green. Oh my god, no, that just took a big chunk out of it. They are so, so fragile. Be so careful with these shimmers. This is like a... What colour even is that? I don't know, but it's absolutely stunning. It's like a greeny, bronzy colour. And then there's this bluey brown one. <gasps> That's like a shape shifter. Let's go for this one, the bluey brown. Yeah, they do almost feel like creams. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sorry. I'm just in the moment. Can you see that? Oh wow. Wow. Oh my god, these shimmers are unbelievable. It's almost like that wet look. Wow. Oh my god, they are stunning. Wow, 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 wow. Let me take this one just on my inner corners. I really hope it's coming across on camera how stunningly beautiful that shade is. It is just so pretty. Then on the very center of my lids, I'm taking this Dazzle Stick in the shade Hail Surge. And I'm just going to take a tiny bit of this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do it on my finger. Oh. <gasps> oh my god. Okay, I think I even took a bit too much there. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh my god. These are absolutely stunning. That is beautiful. I've got to say, these dazzle sticks, just from swatching the shades on my hand, these are some of the most exciting eyeshadow products that I've tried in a long time. They are beautiful. They're so sparkly. They're almost wet looking. <laughs> I need to stop gasping. Calm down, Sophie. It's just a bit of makeup. Let me just fix up my under eyes real quickly with just a little bit of the blue and a bit of the brown as well. 
For mascara, I've got the Bare Minerals Strength and Length Serum Infused Mascara. This is supposed to make your eyelashes grow the more that you wear it. So, and this is vegan, gluten-free, and tree nut free. So if you have any allergies, this is pretty good mascara to go for. Packaging is just simple matte black. Ooh, the brush looks very scary. That is a really spiky plastic brush. Oh my God, look at the shape of that. That is the weirdest mascara brush shape. It's flat, how strange. I absolutely love the Bare Minerals. Oh my God, I can't get over this. This eyeshadow like what i absolutely love the bed minerals mascara i think it's called is it the lash topia mascara or something or have i just made that up oh i see the back of it kind of gets more mascara on your lashes i love this brush is kind of lethal because it's really spiky if you poke this in your eye i would tell you it would not be a fun day come on build me some volume please okay we're getting there we're getting there in order to comb through your lashes with it you have to kind of turn it on its side and that's where i'm a bit more prone to poking my myself in the eye it's just not giving me the volume that i want and that that other mascara does it's definitely separating my lashes nicely though but i just love a bit more volume that would do i'm just gonna wait for my lashes to dry i'm gonna do my lips and then i have one of those really exciting liner lash glue pens that's a eyeliner and lash glue in one this is by a brand called wonder 2 i think it's the brand that makes wonder brow and again these are vegan must have matte comfort wear lipstick with hyaluronic acid this is in the shade needed nude and Ooh, looks quite nice. It's quite a dark nude though. Ooh, it's very creamy. Very creamy. I would say it's more of a satin finish than matte. I wonder if it's gonna dry down because it did say that it was six hour wear. It's a nice color, but I think I'd prefer this when I've got my tan on just cause this is a little bit dark for what I want at the moment. So what I am just gonna do is take a little bit of concealer, my nude sticks concealer, and I'm gonna add this in the middle. Finally, to finish off this video, I've got the So Su Divine Duo Magic Liner, which is a two-in-one lash adhesive and liquid eyeliner. I've seen quite a lot of people use these on Instagram. I've seen an Eyelo one as well. I think there's another brand that makes them. Oh my God, wait, what? Do I have to click it? <gasps> Oh, I do. What? I'm really confused. Why did that not come back out? Is it, am I supposed to like click it a lot because that's just got stuck? Press the tail button at the base until it clicks. Shake the liner pen. Allow three to five minutes for the formula to, to completely infiltrate the tip. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Three to five. So I've returned. It's been five minutes and oh, okay. It's nearly all infiltrated to the tip. Let me just give it another good shake. This is going to be a bit tricky because normally I would do my liner, then do my mascara, then do my lashes. However, because this is a lash glue as well, if I'd have done it before my mascara, I think it would have dried. I'm going to add two layers just for good measure. <laughs> Here is the moment of truth. Will my lash stick onto it? Ooh. Oh, these lashes are really natural. I kind of wanted something a bit more intense it's actually stuck it's stuck to the liner and it's my wing sticky not massively what how does that work um i'm really really quite impressed well obviously you could use this with any lashes potentially i wasn't really expecting it to work you could always just do your regular wing liner and then just do this over the top of it let's do a second layer again because it definitely is a bit more difficult to get a precise wing with let me just actually put them into place oh my god it's really really sticky which actually is kind of bad because i want to move the placement and it's like fully stuck and it actually sticks on the inner corner my inner corner is stuck can you see that oh my god won't lie to you didn't really think that was going to work as well as it did wow i'm impressed i'm really impressed and then it kind of feels like it's dried now so the the outer liner doesn't feel sticky wow so this is a close-up of the final look you know what i should have just turned down my brightness for this whole video i'm really sorry that this has probably been a really bright video but i'm actually really happy with the overall look i think it looks really cool well that was definitely a very interesting experience i think i've discovered some pretty good new products here i think my favorite thing from this video it's got to be those eyeshadow shadow sticks from KVD. They're just absolutely unbelievable. The lipstick never like fully dried down. It definitely feels a little bit more matte now, but still creamy, still movable. I've got to say, I'm impressed. I am very impressed. I will leave everything linked down below in case you guys are interested. And I'm just going to answer a question of the day to finish off the video. Today's question comes from Morgan Irving and she has said, how is your courgette doing? Have you ate her? <laughs> I still get notifications for my comment on that every day. So if you didn't know, and if you don't follow me on Instagram and Twitter, a couple months ago, I accidentally grew a 
giant courgette in my garden. I didn't even realize it was growing. I thought my plant was dead. Left it for about a month, went out to check on it, and I had this monstrous courgette that was literally like this big. It actually weighed more than me when my mum gave birth to me. So it was a pretty big courgette, although I was a small baby. It's actually still in my fridge, chopped up into pieces. I did eat a bit of it, but it wasn't very nice because when they grow to that stage where they're more of a marrow, it's mostly just seeds and they lose a lot of their flavor. Don't really know what to do with it. It's still sitting in my fridge, still hasn't gone moldy. It's just like sitting there indestructible. And um, yeah, I'm probably gonna have to get rid of, rid of it soon, but I'm, I'm glad that I tried it. I'm glad you're interested in the courgette. There we go, she's, uh, she's dead, she's chopped up in my fridge, RIP. Right, I'm gonna go. I've been filming for so long. I hope you guys are all doing good and I will see you in my next video. Bye. That'll do, Donkey, that'll do.